For the most part, comics are bought and sold on expectations. You know what you're going to get with a Batman or Superman comic. However, often you'll open a comic expecting something, only to be met with something entirely different. Batman will always be grouchy, and Iron Man will always be smart. But not everything in the world of comics will always be as straightforward. With this in mind, I'm Dan from What Culture, and these are 10 comics that turned out nothing like you expected. Number 10. Nimona Upon first starting Nimona, it's easy to see the characters solely by typecast. Balasa Blackheart, villain at large, an anti-hero at heart, his bumbling but loyal sidekick Nimona, and their enemy, Sir Goldenloin, a golden-haired hero with a long past involving Blackheart. This setup is arguably created so you'll have preconceived ideas about where the plot might go, only to crush them and surprise you continuously. For starters, the fantasy world has some incredibly high-tech components, including Bluetooth, computers, and security technology. Secondly, the conventional story of endearing villain who isn't all that bad is turned on its head pretty fast, as it becomes clear the institution that governs the lands is sketchy as hell and pretty evil itself. And so, our lovable villains quickly become lovable heroes as they seek to dismantle the organization, leading to a story of well-meaning monsters, surprising amounts of genetic experimentation, and what appears to be a romance between Blackheart and Goldenloin. Number 9. Next Wave Agents of Hate Next Wave Agents of Hate is a paradox of sorts. Known as simply Next Wave when the very first issue came out, it would go on to be known as Next Wave Agents of Hate from issue 3. While this doesn't sound like a big deal, because on a practical level it's not, and was merely done to avoid trademark issues, it's also more than a little confusing. Because if you come into the series after hearing it called Agents of Hate, you're going to be surprised when you find out that they quit hate altogether in the first issue. With this in mind, if you go into the comic expecting super-powered government agents, you're going to be disappointed, because that's not what the comic's about. Number 8. Ice Cream Man If you read the synopsis of Ice Cream Man, it would easily seem like it was about the Ice Cream Man himself, who is supposed to be a bizarre harbinger of doom wrapped up in a jazzy ice cream truck. While the series unsurprisingly does feature the ice cream man, he's more of a continual ominous presence that occasionally is relegated to the background while a series of Twilight Zone-esque shenanigans take place. We see people go through surreal, sometimes supernatural ordeals, all of which sees the ice cream man lurking ominously in the background and occasionally pulling the strings, but a surprising amount has little to nothing to do with him. Number 7. Squirrel Girl When people are trying to name a hero that sounds ridiculous, the first they tout is usually Squirrel Girl, and this is fair enough. After all, the whole point of the character is supposed to be a little ridiculous. But unfortunately, many miss that the intent of Squirrel Girl is to be a little weird and silly, and thus they never try the series, and never potentially find one of their favourite comedy comics. While the series does contain its fair share of drama, it's largely focused on creating a playful tone that affectionately mocks the tropes and characters that Marvel holds dear. The whole idea of Squirrel Girl does this, as a squirrel is a seemingly impractical animal to get superpowers from, and yet Doreen Green ends up managing ridiculous feats with her abilities. In short, is more like Deadpool than it is any regular superhero series, and although this can come as a surprise at first, it's definitely a welcome one. Number 6. Silent Hill Now, when you imagine a Silent Hill comic in your head, it's probably a pretty straightforward scenario. Lots of fog, maybe a cheeky pyramid head in there for some seasoning, and for sure, a character who's being haunted by their actions through the physical manifestations they see in Silent Hill. So it's fair to say anyone expecting this was more than a little surprised when they opened the pages of the 2003 Silent Hill comic and find out it's not about Silent Hill. Well, at least not in the way you might expect. The series is instead about a psychologist trying to understand a young patient who has been traumatised by her own experiences in Silent Hill. The story barely actually takes place in Silent Hill, and the location feels much easier to escape than the games would suggest. It's an interesting time, much like the rest of the comic franchise, but it's also undeniably a different experience to what many players would expect from the series. Number 5. X-Force for a period of time, 
the X-Force was merely yet another one of Marvel's superpowered teams, which is by no means a bad thing, but it did easily blend in with many of the other teams of a similar flavour, which is why decisions were made to make some big changes to the title. And so, the X-Force as we knew them were replaced with a series of surreal mutants, with the new group existing as equal parts superhero team and media celebrities, leading to many of the members being more concerned about fame than actually doing good. This change was well received despite the fact that it was considered confusing for many new readers who had picked up the X-Force expecting more of the same, only to get an experience that was worlds apart from the old X-Force. Not wanting to confuse people further, this new X-Force would change their team name to the X-Statics, leaving their original name to be reclaimed by Cable, differentiating them in the process. Number 4. Crossed Plus 100 Crossed is basically the comic equivalent of one of those uber gory, endlessly vicious horror movies. Every crime imaginable happens in it all the time. So when it was revealed that Alan Moore, of all people, was doing a Crossed special, many wondered how far he'd go with it in terms of it being totally messed up. As it turned out, Moore would get weird with it, but not in the way you might have expected. Crossed Plus 100 was set a hundred years after the Crossed exploded into the world and basically caused an apocalypse, and Alan sought to change the language of the characters in the story to reflect the different time period. This involved replacing many, many words with replacements that you could just about make out given the context and rough meaning of the word itself, meaning the readers basically had to learn a new language when they initially were just in it for the goal. Number 3. Battle Royale Having birthed the genre that would eventually pop out the likes of Hunger Games and Fortnite, it's fair to say that Battle Royale is a pretty big deal. It's also fair to say that you know to expect the worst from the manga in terms of gore and awful deeds, because it's about a bunch of kids being trapped on an island by the government and forced to kill each other until one remains. Weirdly though, if you went into the series expecting the most grim, dark look into humanity possible, you'd likely find yourself surprised because our protagonists ultimately see the best in people through each other. Battle Royale is a series that shows how brutal people can be to one another, but in the end, it's also the one that shows it is human nature to care for one another, which is perhaps not the message you would expect it to bring you. Number 2. Four Kids Walk Into A Bank When you look up stuff around four kids walk into a bank, it seems like some real wholesome, family-friendly fun. Okay, so family-friendly fun that revolves around four young teens possibly robbing a bank, but still, when the comic starts, you initially only see stuff that supports that idea. After all, the kids are all playing D&D together, which gives off some Stranger Things vibes. Then, one of them drops an F-bomb, and the tone starts to become clear from here. Because, four kids walk into a bank is an extremely accurate look into a bunch of young teens, which means it gets super intense at points, because it takes every awful thing you've ever heard a kid say, and puts it into illustrated panels. By the end of the first issue alone, there's been a tasteful array of swears, a child being punched in the face by a grown adult, and one of the most hardcore disses of all time, handed out by an 11 year old girl. Number 1. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW's current Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run is a solid reminder for any parent who buys their kids comics to double check exactly how child friendly certain series actually are. As while TMNT, for all intents and purposes, is an all ages franchise, the comic is decidedly darker than its TV counterpart. The turtles bleed, deal with domestic abuse, and see some frankly gory stuff go down. Weirdly, none of it feels out of line with the franchise itself, but you'd probably want to give it a few years before introducing a kid to this series, as it can get pretty violent at points. This is by all means a cool change, as it does mean that those of us who grew up with the Turtles can read a series that has grown up with us. But the difference between it and the daytime television show can easily prove a little jarring at first, that is until you've properly settled in. And that's our list. Know of any other comics that turned out nothing like you expected? Let us know in the comments section below. You can follow me on Twitter at DanJDurkin. And after that, be sure to swing on over to whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this one every single day. For now though, I've been Dan and I'll catch you in the next one.